My boy said, hey, we're going to come pick you up, take you to the disco tonight, get your mind off your tra- troubles. It's all right, mm-hmm. cool, pick me up. So they came to the house, and my friend Cliff brought this guy with him I never saw before, and my brother was there with this other guy. So I said, yeah, come on in, let's have a drink at the bar. So downstairs in my basement and bar was a shrine to graffiti. I had all these whole cars and shit, blow-ups, all kinds of shit, hanging up canvases. So we started doing drinks at the bar, and the one guy sitting there with his drink like this, and I said to him, what's up? You know, like, you look disturbed. He's like, I'm in the Vandal Squad. I said, you're in a what? He said, I'm in the Vandal Squad. He goes, they got fucking files on you guys. Well, is the Wiz saw? I go, I'm fucking saw. He goes, you're saw? You got files on you like this, man. I'm like, yeah, you were never here, right? And I looked at the guys and I'm like, you were never here, right? Killer, killer, podcast. Killer, killer, official <laughs> Street Culture TV. Instagram UK Frontline. Beatbox created. Killer Killer. And we need to talk about world music and street culture. Killer Killer Podcast. Uh, ladies and gentlemen, Killer Killer Podcast, live and direct, central London or central as you need to be. Night by now, you've been checking in, tuning in, and clocking out for enough time. So, yeah, big up yourselves and everybody else that's following, sharing, and caring. Uh, you know what time it is. How sponsors the mighty GK Nifty Heads have a massive 100,000 play to earn NFTs to give away to the streets. Just hit the link in the description or go to gkniftyheads.com and get ready for Hot Awards Summer 2024. Uh, we're going transit. Atlantic, no less. Yo, I love these ones. And yes, we're talking to a Don, uh, TMB president, no doubt. From NYC to Arizona is the Wiz's uh, compadre and more. Sa, TMB inside. Oh, and Vop stars. TMB inside the place. Sa, what's good? No doubt about it. No doubt about it. Yeah, it, it's a trip to, to stay, still be involved in this game and then see that where, what, it, what it elevated to, you know. Like we started this as kids and you know, no internet, no magazines, no books to go by. You just benching, sitting on the trains. We we invented the word benching, sitting on a wooden bench on the subway system, watching the trains go by, going into the layups, studying other people's graffiti and like photographing whatever we could if we could steal our mother's camera. You know, I started I was 12 years old. So like whatever I had, I had appropriate. And that's what like today, kids kids can go to a store and buy a, a bouquet of colors. Like you had you had 2,000 graffiti writers trying to steal the same can of jungle green Krylon from the from the hardware store. So if you had a can of jungle green, you weren't going to use the whole can on one piece. You were going to use it sparingly because, hey, you know, I want to have some dope colors for my pieces. So, you, you know, if, if, you, if I appropriated, if I went racking and I came up with two reds, a brown and a black, I'd say, okay, the two reds will be my fill in. The brown will be my 3D and the black will be my outline. You use what you stole. You use what you racked up. You didn't have this luxury of going on the internet. Okay, I'm going to have fat purples. I'm going to have greens. I'm going to have blues. And I'm going to order my fat caps online. What online? There was no such thing, bro. We used to go to the supermarket, <laughs> open up the cans, and take the Niagara straight starches and walk out with a mouthful of fat caps. What? And that was our community. That's the way we used to do it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so I, I, I just think, you know, the younger writers... They got to respect where it came from. Like, without us, there's no them. So they have to understand, like, we made this a vocation, and it, it, we, didn't have, we didn't have rules at the beginning. We made the rules. We didn't have, uh, you know, an avenue to get our, our stuff other than racking. And uh-huh. like, you know, if you're a kid, you don't have no income. You know, you want to yep. get up, you got to rack. If you don't know how to learn to rack, you're not getting up. So, like, we would go on rack missions. Dude, we'd come home, you know, we'd, as soon as one of us had a car, we'd go on these tours and come home with 100, 150 cans in a day, bro. And then what we used to do, our rule was within TMB on RTW, like, we fill up the we fill up the trunk, we got back, and we just divided up evenly. So there was no hard feelings because I may come across three aqua turquoises and you got nothing but, you know, Silvers, all right, that's all right. One of them is for you, one is from Miz, one's for Satch. Like me and Satch used to go on mad rack missions. Me and Fuzz one, mad rack uh-huh. missions, and, and Ghost. Me, Fuzz, and Ghost would take a Lincoln. I was probably like 20 at the time. And we'd drive for hours, man, and stop. Wow. Every highway store along the strip, stop, run in, rack up, come up. And, you know, all those dudes were really good rackers. Fuzz was a great racker, Ghost. 
is the Wiz, Sash. You know, nobody bought spray paint. No such thing. It's a given to most people nowadays that even graffiti exists as a art style. Like back then, not only were you doing something ad hoc and like the materials were never there, but also you're creating letter form and styles that, <laughs> to be quite honest, which, you know, can be personified that and amplified that. On you were kind of judged. You, if you, you were kind of judged if you bit someone's style back in the day. You had to come up with some shit original and you had to have a name that you owned. Like, you know, you're not going to start off, a writer's not going to start off today, but there are a few that'll take someone's name, like, you know, not to throw anybody under the bus, but some guys writing crash on the freight trains in the, in the United States. Someone's writing uh, part, he's putting part two at least, like part from the Death Squad is legendary. Mm. You know, legendary. You know, it's like, it's like, why would you write, would you start writing graffiti today and write comment or blade or scene or, or, or is the way no, you wouldn't. So no. like, you know, if you want respect from your peers, you got to be original and you got to have, you know, you have to have a name that you own. That's very important. Well, you come from a, an, a, an incredible legacy. I mean, to start off with We Owe and Cisco from the 70s, uh, original TMB, then fast forward to Is the Wiz, Satch, Too Ill, Key, uh, Savs, which you mentioned, Pulse, Attack from Germany. I mean, yourself. It, I mean, this is, these are like pivotal people within yeah. the. the I remember when Pulse, I remember when Pulse, he was a kid when I met him. He first came to the United States. I mean, Is has gone 15 years. So yeah. you got to remember, I, I, met, I met Pulse probably 20 years ago. I met Ruff and Stylo and, and, and Solo and Nikwe. I met those dudes. 35 years ago so come on man i'm 60 years old so like yeah. and i'm still painting so like everyone everyone that's a part of this becomes a fan mm -hmm. you know what i'm saying so like if i see someone from the old days do a piece a new kid may look at that and say oh god that's horrible bro that's i don't want to throw anybody under the bus and Yo, that's, that's, he's a legend, man. He's, that dude's 65 years old. He just did a piece. Quick just did a, did a, did a whole car and he's an F's not too long ago. What? Like, that's he's, crazy. He's, he's 66, about 66 years old. So like. It's yeah, I see Duster the, out there a lot as well. I see Duster's busy. Yeah. It is, it, there's, Duster I, I've never met. I know the original Duster, Larry Lawson. Duster, he's passed away a long time ago. He wrote with Vinny. He started in like 1973, four. Wow. That was the original Duster. But like, I, I, I came up in a weird era. Like, I mean, there's, there's that whole group like that you see in Style Wars that came out like in 80, 82. Mm -hmm. And then there's a whole group that came out in the early 70s. I came out in 77. So I was watching like the, the changing of the guard. I, the, the trains that I witnessed firsthand, like Don Juan, Jester, is the Wiz. They were coming to the close of their careers. And wow. I witnessed and 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 back then they didn't buff the flats, the flat trains. They didn't buff, so there was like Uncle John and tear pieces done in 1974, still running intact in 1977. They wow. weren't buffing them, and then there was still a, a large thing of respect, like like Uncle John and Tia. Those guys were like legends, and they were pretty mm -hmm. badass dudes. So like you know, they wouldn't think about going over them because uh -huh. Uncle John, Uncle John, will hunt you down and find you. You know, like that's the kind of thing. Duke Nine, Fane is the Wiz. I, I could drop names all day long, but I won't. But these are the guys that, from my era, that were important to me. The Top Crew, Mickey and Hearst, that started the Top Crew. Like I saw all their pieces. I remember Dondi when he was writing Nako. I remember when Doro was writing Sono when they first started. Though oh. they started when I did, which was kind of unique. So when when I I finally got to catch up with Dondi. Uh, we were we were in Amsterdam for the coming of the subway show in '92, and we got to chop it up a little bit. And some guys uh, crossed out one of his throw ups or his tags out front um, outside the museum. So mm -hmm. he he went to step to the kid that did it, and like, they surrounded him. So he ran the museum, and the only guy that was standing there was me, because uh, Quick and Blade were doing negotiations with uh, Hank Pinenberg, who was buying some of their artwork. Right. And uh, Donnie's like, "Sorry, come here, man. I need you, man. Can you get my back?" I'm like, "Yeah, what's the matter, bro?" And I ran outside. And we chased these dudes. When I, when I, I was, back then, I was Jack, bro. They used to call me Viking. That's my other graffiti name because, <laughs> not because of what I wrote. I used to be, for, I used to be Diesel. But anyway, I come running well, out the door and I was like, me and Donnie chased them up the block and they ran for their lives and we, we laughed about it. But like, Don, Don, Donnie uh, is one of those guys that changed the game to me. Like he, he, he took 
what he learned from the top crew about bombing. Mm -hmm. And you know, to me, there were there were, there were writers that would throw up writers, bombers. There were yeah. writers that burned only that like to burn, like Lee and Slave. They really didn't like to do throw ups. They like to do whole cars. But there was a certain amount of writers, like Is the Wiz, mm. Dandy, you know, Zephyr. Mm. They bombed. They did throw ups. They did burners. They did insides of the trains with Marcus. They did yeah. it all. And there's only a certain amount of writers in, in, in my perspective, in my, in my longevity in this game. I've been in this game 46 years from what I've seen. And there was only a certain amount of writers that were all city bombers, all city burners, all city insides guys. They did, you know, it's not, graffiti's multifaceted. You just can't do one part of the game. No, you, can't, you could, yeah. you could just be a throw up artist, like in, in, did in, 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 in. He did a couple of pieces, but mostly just bomb, like, and he's part of history. And it's an important part of history because like the top crew kind of changed the game from doing five letter piece names. All of a sudden, everybody had a two letter name. Ike became Is. Jester became D.Y. Mickey, 729, became two. Hearst became O.I. So now you had two types of graffiti trying to coexist. Guys that were doing beautiful burners and pieces. And then you had the group of guys that were like, I'm going to get up on every car. Like like the cat mentality. The two that, that, started by the, that, that started by the top crew, the top, the odd partners. The only crew that's actually in the Hip Hop Hall of Fame, T.O.P., and James Top made sure that that they they got their recognition in the hip hop hall of fame. But like the top crew, to me, they changed the game. Seventy five was like everyone was doing bubble letters, pieces. You had the single hits turning into you know uh, big tags with outlines, then turned into bubble letters like Comet and T Cool and these guys in the Bronx made bubble letters. And then you had simple pieces like from 75, 76, 77. Mm -hmm. and then but seventy five, everyone, even Vinny. Vinny was an old city king. He, he, he had a two letter name, FI. It stood for <laughs> fuck it, fuck it too, you know? And like <laughs> some people said it would stood for fuck in because he didn't like in changing the game. But in was a top crew member that changed the game. The two letter throw ups, they won every car. And then the little panels between the windows were called floaters. Mm. So a two letter name fits perfect there. So yeah, 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 yeah. Everyone else could have beautiful pieces on their cars. You could still squeeze in your throw-ups on the floaters. So it changed the game. That's Very crazy. Cool. The intel. Very cool part of history. Yeah, man. That 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 whole one subject right there, so much intel and a real insight in the depth of your understanding of the game. And like you say, 60 years um, of study, <laughs> we'll call it that, you know, you saw the evolution uh, yes. And you will be able to. You're able to um, describe that in a re very comprehensive timeline. Let's um. Let's take it back. Let's take it right back. You mentioned 12 years old when you were uh, first studying and uh, got into yes. graph. Uh, Italian Brooklyn. Would I be right in thinking? Uh, I, I was. I was born in Brooklyn, but I was raised in uh, Richmond Hill and Ozone Park, Queens. Ozone Park. And, uh, I, I had to walk to school uh, towards Jamaica Avenue. Mm -hmm. I lived between Atlantic Avenue and Jamaica Avenue, which were, ran parallel to each other. So I had to walk up Jamaica Avenue to go to school, walking towards the J train. And the J train, the train lines used to uh, interchange when they would pull trains out of the yard. A J train would run on the LL, the M, the B, and the RR lines, and, and sometimes end up in the D yard or whatever. Mm -hmm. So like... You would see writers from all over Queens and Brooklyn, pretty much. Not really Bronx, but Brooklyn and Queens. Mm -hmm. So uh, an older friend of mine that I knew since I was five years old, we used to play football together. You know, when, when I was five and he was he was eight, it didn't, age didn't really matter because we were just throwing a football around. But when he got to be about 12 or 13, you know, it wasn't cool to hang out with a 10-year-old, you know, nine, 10-year-old. Mm -hmm. So he started, he started to do his thing with the graffiti. And he was his, he wrote Psych. And on my block, I lived on 109th Street. And on 109th Street, you had Saw, you had Psych, and you had Satch. Three <laughs> legendary, well, I don't want to call myself a legend, but I'm just a writer. But the three of us on one street, let alone what was on, going on in my neighborhood. That's is, crazy. That's trouble the right there. <laughs> right. And is the Wiz, Vinny, Rock. I can name 100 riders from that neighborhood. And then uh, to... Uh, to go to school to look at the trains and then when my friend psych started writing psych 
I wanted an S name. So, you know, he wrote Psyche, S-I-K-E. So uh, I was in social studies class. I was in the seventh grade and they were teaching us about the czar of Russia and the czar of China. So the czar of China was T-S-A-R and the czar of Russia was C-Z-A-R. So I, I came up with I came up with S Z A R because graffiti was about being a king. So czar and and czars were king. And so I wanted to be a king. So I said I'm going to write S Z A R. So I was pronouncing it, pronouncing it czar, and guys were calling me Caesar and Caesar. And I said no, nah, <laughs> I dropped the Z. I dropped the Z. Very sh- I, I, I I I probably bombed with S Z A R for about maybe three months, and then I dropped the Z. And I kind of liked the way S.A.R. looked. And then one day I was with a few other writers and this old time uh, S.O. one that taught psych how to write. He was older than all of us. And he was like, so I love that name. That's a real graffiti name. And I was like, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'm, that's me right there. That's me forever. I'm going to keep this name. Forever. <laughs> and, 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 and I, I, I would check I would check the train lines and I ask all the all the older writers when I hung out with Is the Wiz and said, "Hey, did you ever see a SAR up on any other lines?" Nah, man, no. Nah. There was a, one guy that wrote Z A R, but not S A R. So I was like, oh, "I'm good, I'm good." So it was very important to me to be uh, original and have my own name. You know, some guys will get a name from another writer, which is cool. Like you pass on the legacy. Yeah, that's like right. I was, there was a PI one who gave the name to PI two, like. Uh, Dynamite Pinto, and then you had uh, Fane who wrote PI2. That, that I, I like that because it shows you a history and uh, a, a, a brotherhood. Hey, I'm passing on my name to you. You keep that name going. And, you know, you want to me, that's what I try to do with the crew. Like TMB mm-hmm. is made me vice, is made me vice president of TMB. And uh, I, uh, I, I felt, I felt like uh, compelled to keep it alive. Like if you don't bring in new blood, some people are against, oh, well, the books are closed. We don't want to bring in new writers into our crew. Mm. The, the crew will die. Just like any, it's like, it's like two people getting married and not have a baby. No baby, the family line dies, right? Yeah, you got to have, gotta, gotta have babies. So I bring in, not that they're babies, but I bring in young blood, young talent, some of my homies, and these guys kill shit. And they, they're dedicated. They're true to the game. Mm. They love the history and they make me proud, you know, and I'll drop their names because these guys are keeping TMB alive today. Like my boy, Moe's M O E S mm-hmm. kills the freight, kills the freights. Zokes Z O K E S mm. all over the country. He's got a thousand freights running, right? right? Spine, uh, test like desk. These guys kill the trains. Gabby Venta, two females, Gabby and Venta. They bomb like so. I feel I feel I owe it to my friend. Is I promised him that I was gonna, you know, I took it serious when he made me the vice president. Oh, yeah, it would be hard not to, right? <laughs> right, thirty-five yeah. years ago, he made Satch the Satch the warlord, and he made me vice president. So I was like, I took that very seriously, and I still do. And to this day, you know, TMB is alive and well, running all over, you know. Unfortunately, the subways get buffed and because and, they have the clean train program. I mean, a New York City subway train is painted. If they don't photograph it, it goes straight to the buff. Yeah, so, I noticed that. There's a couple of Instagrams that do account for yeah. uh, uh, certain oh, yeah. activities, but it's few and far oh, yeah. between, isn't it? Yeah, but but the problem is, you know, we did it. I mean, I was part of the clean train movement. We kept going. Like me, is Satch, Cavs, Ghost, Ven, mm-hmm. Ket, uh, Smith. You know, I could fuzz. We kept going. I mean, we went on to like ninety three. Ninety three. That's reasonably late in the in the. In the they that, they that said time. the subways were graffiti free. The New York City said that the graffiti the trains the graffiti trains were uh, graffiti free in nineteen eighty nine, and they said the last train was pulled. My my one of my trains. Me, it was a it was a a cav a cav sar satch. No, sorry. A cab saw psych was the last graffiti train. I still have the newspaper article. The last graffiti train in Coney Island being taken out to scrap, and, it was, and they photographed it. And it was it was our train. Wow. But, uh, we kept we kept going, we kept going, and uh, you know we had uh, we had files on us as far as the van squad was concerned. Here's a funny story. I'll make it really quick. No, go. Uh, and you, this me, is your me, my, me, I'm looking forward to my, that. Me and, my, me, and my ex, me and my ex had separated. Me and my first wife had separated. And I was probably like 20, 
five. And uh, a couple of my boys said, hey, we're going to come pick you up, take you to the disco tonight, get your mind off your tro troubles. It's all right, mm -hmm. cool, pick me up. So they came to the house, and my friend Cliff brought this guy with him I never saw before, and my brother was there with this other guy. So I said, yeah, come on in. Let's have a drink at the bar. So downstairs in my basement and bar was a shrine to graffiti. I had all these whole cars and shit, blow-ups, all kinds of shit, hanging up canvases. So we started doing drinks at the bar, and the one guy sitting there with his drink like this. And I said to him, what's up? You know, like, you look disturbed. He's like, I'm in the Vandal Squad. I said, you're in a what? He said, I'm in the Vandal Squad. He goes, they got fucking files on you guys. Well, is the Wiz saw? I go, I'm fucking saw. He goes, you're saw? You got files on you like this, man. I'm like, yeah, you were never here, right? And I looked at the guys and I'm like, you were never here, right? He was like, uh, like, I said, bro, anybody comes knocking on my door, you know, this is young, crazy saw. This is not 60 year old saw. I'm like, anybody comes knocking on my door, I'm coming to your house. Understood? But I'm, I don't, I come heavy and I don't come. I don't talk shit. I come heavy or I don't come. Ooh. You understand? So he was like, Hey man, I'm off right now. I don't, I don't really care what. I, well, maybe we should go to the, the club now and get the <laughs> fuck out of here because I don't want you to poison your eyes no more. Because I had a whole shrine, bro, next to my bar. Oh you my know, god! All whole cars, blow up <laughs> photos. I had a giant canvas that Quick did, Blade had a bunch of hanging up, and he was just like, he was in a fucking museum and didn't know what you know. What I mean? That so, is incredible. I mean, didn't that trouble your mind on the night out? That must have just been no. on the back, no. No, because I knew I knew the face and the name, so and I knew my boy brought him to my house. I told my boy, he comes to my house, I'm breaking your legs. So Yeah, 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 exactly. Yeah. You kind of set precedence like don't fuck with this space. I'm not yeah. proud. I'm not proud of it. I was more uh more vicious when I was younger, but yeah. Do, does it is does age come wisdom? Like is there some things that you probably yeah, did, like, yeah with age day? comes wisdom, you know, yeah. you with age comes vulnerability and the the the, uh, the appreciation of life. And I feel bad for the young kids that don't appreciate it. Like, you know, there's life after 20. Like, don't yeah. don't try to be big just to, to impress your friends. Take care of yourself first. And don't lay on the sword for some stupidity that you'll be sorry for later on. You know, but would you forward. would you have told a young Saw that and would he have listened? Good question. I mean, if I respected him, for example, if Is the Wiz would have told me that shit, yeah. like there's a, there's a documentary, I don't know if it's still on YouTube, and Iz talks about the first time he met me. I was about 12 or 13 when I met him. And him and Satch were in the layup, and I already knew Satch. And I had wrote with Syke, who used to bomb with Iz. Mm -hmm. So uh, they, were, they were in the layup taking photos next to one of their pieces. So I was with this kid, Nova, and one of my good friends from childhood who passed away, God rest his soul. I said this to Nova, hey. There's two riders down in the tracks to see where they are. So I jumped down on the tracks and I walk on the catwalk towards them. And they were like, you know, who's this kid, man? He's got fucking balls. He's coming up here, you know? <laughs> yeah, I was like 13. So and I walk right over and, I, and Satch goes, oh, shit, it's Saw. What's up, man? I say, hey, Satch. And I go, if you're Satch, I go, you must be is. And they just did it. CI, CI and CT were two throw up names. They did CT stood for Crazy Todd and CI stood for Crazy Is. So they did a CT, a CI piece. And I was like, and you must be as the whiz. He goes, no, I'm CI. And I looked at him and I'm like, CI stands for crazy is. And he started laughing. Right? And he said, don't bullshit me. He's like, don't, don't bullshit me. I mean, I ain't no fucking stupid kid. I know I've been in the game a while. So he started laughing. So like, he came up, he goes, hey, well, he started talking to me like a, like a friend. And he's like, yeah, we're starting to bring back uh, an old crew that I was recruited from. It's called Prisoners of Graffiti, POG. Mm. And he put me in POG that day. And I was like, yeah, I'm so excited about it. I told wow. my friends, he's the whiz, put me in POG. But I wanted to put me in TMB. But he put me in POG, so I'm happy. You know, But I wanted to be put in TMB. But uh, in, his, in his YouTube video, he talks and he's like, you know, Satch wanted to bring him around because he was a you know cool kid from the neighborhood. He goes, it's like, this was like, I was, I was, you know, I was 17 and he was, he was 12. I was like, I'm not bringing this kid out for the layup. But he gets hurt. He's blood on my hands and shit. So we, we hooked up later on, but we always joked about that because, you know, I didn't think you were up and you were, you, I was already bombing. So it didn't matter if he took me or not. I was still going to write, you know. Yeah, yeah, like yeah. Was yeah. I was already corrupted. I, uh, I saw excerpts of Pulses is the Wiz documentary. Um, he, mm -hmm. he gave he gave me a little uh, sneak preview, and uh, he, he's been working on that a long time. He interviewed me for that. Yeah, bro. He, I mean, 
just taking elements of what I've seen, you know, you seem to have been a very important figure in Is the Wizard's life. Yeah, we were brothers, man. And and, and people don't understand that. The TMB was a family. It was family early on with Cisco and Leo and Kaz and Is. There was a family on the Lower East Side of Manhattan. They were tight. You know, I keep in touch with Cisco to this day. And he respects the fact that I keep TMB alive. And he's got, I got his blessings and everything. But Is put me in it and, you know, and I'm I'm going to perpetuate that and push that to to the end till the wheels fall off. But like like you said, the uh, we were family. Like you know, is me we used to go to Yankee games. We worked together. You know, we we, so we worked good. together. We worked together at the airport. You know, we uh, I have pictures of him holding my son when he was born. Like you know, my sons used to call him Uncle Mike. My my two boys, Lewis and Vincent, used to call him Uncle Mike. They still have when Lewis was born. Is and Satch bought a train set, a freight train set for under the Christmas tree. And they all did it. They all did a Lewis on one side for his name. And the other side, uh, he has Is the Wiz, Satch, Mickey from Amsterdam did one. I think Quick did one. I think Blade did one. And and uh, they have his name on one side. And I tell my son, he's 31 now. You know, he's 31 now. Wow. I said, this train, I said, this train set, I said, you got to take care of that train set because it's, you know, it, it, it's museum worthy at this it point. It really and is, yeah. Everyone, everyone's older. Satch has got nothing to do with graffiti no more. Is passed away. I says you got to, you know, treasure that. He goes, I do that. I got it all wrapped up, and you know, I take it out once in a while, and, I, and it, it, it all works and shit. But Satch and and, and, and is put that to my house when. when That's so much more. sick. Um, I mean, you talk about the international value of TMB. I mean, we, we've already no, mentioned. So- mentioned Pulse, but there, you know, there's also Atec in uh, Germany. There's um, Mickey in Amsterdam, uh, a- you mentioned. A- 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 used to work more. And Atec, when I first saw Atec TMB on, on Instagram, I, I said, what's up? Who put you in TMB? He's like, it's Sula. I'm like, okay, no, I know. Because he painted it once at the Fun Factory. Like, guys change up their names because of obvious reasons, because, you know, every time he does a Sula piece, they come knocking on his door, so you got to change it up. Yeah, real Which cool. I get, you know what I'm saying? I yeah. get that shit. My dog's barking because he heard me knock on the desk here. It's all right, boy. Take it easy, killer. Is he the same? In the dog cool killer. Oh. <laughs> yeah. Um, He's named after El Chapo. Yo, I love it. I love it. Um, in my in 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 my uh, nostalgic, I guess, uh, mind of where I think it probably went back in the day, um, and the way. New York was. I could imagine it got to a real high pitch pressure where you had to get out. Is that the reason? Is that the reason for Arizona? You you moved out to Arizona? No, no. I, uh, my second wife is from Arizona originally, so uh, she uh, we used to come out here on vacation and stuff. And then she's like, you know, I'd like to move out here and catch up with my family. Her father got sick, and then we decided to move out here. And when he passed, and uh, I I just. I always saw myself, most East Coasters from the United States, when they get older, you know, to get out of the city in the cold, they go to Florida. You know, a yeah. lot of my boys are in Florida. Like Sago, RTW, TMB, Sago's in Florida. A lot of people in Florida now. So that's why I always saw myself going. But Arizona, yeah, it's like I'm originally, my, my family's from Sicily. So I've been to Sicily a few times, and, and Arizona is the same climate as Sicily. Terracotta roofs, sun, just no ocean. You know, you got pools and you got lakes, but it, 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 it's got a nice vibe. But let me tell you about that, how how this is this is a great story. So <laughs> I move out to Arizona. I'm out of the game a little bit. Now, I've been in and out of the game my whole life. So I come back into the game and uh, I'm not I'm not in the game at all. I move out to Arizona and I get a phone call and it's my boy Quick. And Quick says, yo, they opened up a hip hop shop downtown Phoenix, bro, and they're flying me in to op- to do the opening. You got to come by and see me. I says when? He says tomorrow night. I says, oh, I'm going to go see this comedian Sebastian Maniscalco tomorrow night, man. I got tickets, man. I'm going to see you, though, man. She's like, oh man, you got to come see me, bro. Like, so I tell my wife, I said, listen, we're going to going to stop over here. And, uh, mm-hmm. and see quick. I got to see him. He's my boy. I haven't seen him in a while. He's going to be here in Arizona. I want to catch up with him. She's like, okay. So I walk in. There's a line. There's like 50 guys there with their black books. And you know, he's signing black book. I ain't waiting on this. I ain't waiting on this line. So I walk in the front of the line. I kick his chair. I said, "What's up, motherfucker?" He starts screaming. <laughs> Can't believe it's me. Jumps on me. He's hanging, hanging off my neck and shit like this. So the owner of the place, he's a bouncer in real life. Like he's, he's like he, he looks like a linebacker for for, 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 for 
the Jets and shit. He's, he's like right. he's like six, he's like six six three hundred pounds, and he owns the place. So he comes running over. You know, he promotes hip hop. He's a legendary figure out here. Gotcha. His, his Chuck, Chuck House. I give him a shout out. He promotes hip hop here for twenty years. He's been bringing all the acts from all over the world here to Phoenix. Is perform. that that trill spot? Is it? Trill. Yes. yes. Trill. Yeah, yeah. I've heard so, of it. I know it. So this is the grand opening of Trill. So Quick is there as the as the centerpiece, and I show up and so. Quick is screaming and he comes running over. He's like, is everything all right? And Quick is like, this, yo, this is fucking saw. It's my boy, man. We bomb trains together. He lives here. And Chuck is like, what? You live in Phoenix? He says, yeah. He's like, don't go nowhere. Give me a number. And then two weeks later, he had me in there for a show. All the local writers were like, saw, we got a wall. Saw, we got this. Saw, come paint. Come in. You know, it keeps your, your obsession again, right? <laughs> Just when I thought it was out, they put me right back in. And then... Uh, shortly after that, I, I did a few things. I did a show and stuff, and then I got sick. And uh, nice sunny day, I'm driving my car, I put a cigar in my mouth, hit something in the back of my throat. I go like this. It's the size of a fucking golf ball. So I call my wife, we go to urgent care. Urgent care sent me right to the hospital. And then the doctor's like, uh, you, you got cancer. You got to go see a specialist in the morning. So I went to see the specialist. Mm. And uh, COVID had just started, and it my wife couldn't come in. I go in there and the doctor's like, uh, we're going to do everything we can. I says, what do you mean? He says, we're going to do everything we can. you got inoperable throat cancer. Says, it's on its way to your brain. It's in your throat, in your tonsils, up the side of your face. I said, well, just cut it. Just cut it out. He says, we have to move half your face. He says, can't cut it out. I said, okay, let's get this thing started. When will, when will we start treatment? Mm -hmm. And this was Friday. We started my treatment Tuesday. And I had to do, uh, I, was, I was always a, Pretty big guy. I was 240 pounds. I went down 160 pounds. Lost 80 pounds. Wow. And the only reason the only reason why I survived is because of my size. Because they to, to fight what I had, they had to give me uh what they would give somebody with stage four cancer. I only had stage one, but it was a an advanced radical form of cancer that they couldn't operate on. So wow. long story short, I I, I I beat it only because of this, because I kept saying I gotta be far sighted. Yeah. I booked a trip to Miami, rented a hotel on the beach, and every day I would tell my wife would come in and he's like, how are you feeling today? I was like, oh, fucking emaciated and shit. And I was like, yeah. I'm thinking about that beach and I'm going to go see Gloria Estefan's restaurant on the beach and, and, and I'm going to hang out and party on the beach when I'm done with this shit. And you have to be far-sighted because yeah. you know, your mind is a powerful organ. People don't realize how powerful your mind is. And I was like, I'm not going nowhere. And I, you get religious real quick. And I would pray every day and say, listen, I got shit to do. I'm not ready to go yet. I got shit to do. I got kids that aren't settled. I got things I got to do. I got a father that's sick. I got to take care of. I got shit to do. And by the grace of God, I pulled through it. And I went, like I said, went from 240 pounds to 160 pounds. I looked like death. My eyelashes fell out, my hair. I had to do 28 radiation treatments. 20 could kill you. I still have a lot of pain. Yeah, I have a lot of bad. Uh, I have no saliva glands on the, on the right side of my mouth. I, I have difficulty swallowing. Uh, I have thick phlegm, like like putty in my throat. It chokes me up. But I work out every day. I'm fucking strong as a bull. I fight it, and uh, I'm cancer free right now. Four years. So congratulations, brother. That is an incredible story. I mean, got lucky. Yeah, got lucky. you got lucky, man. Yeah, Very lucky. Uh, yeah. And now. Then, as soon as I got my last treatment and shit, I was feeling a little bit better. I was still frail. Mm -hmm. And my boy Zokes, my boy Zoke says, we were hanging out. And he's like, come on, let's go paint a fucking train. And I was like, I, I haven't painted a train in a while, man. He's like, I don't care. Let's go. You need, you need to go. And I, I got to get one in with you. And he was worried about me dying and shit. So I was yeah. like, all right, let's go. So I went and painted one. And it was like, I didn't need the medicine that I was on. It was like, it was like medicine. Came home that night. I was pumped, looking at the pictures. Wow, it was an ugly piece too, but I didn't care. You know, no. I was rusty. And then, shit, I, I got. I probably have over close to close to at least two hundred, if not more, running right now across the country, all over the place. I mean, I want to. I got. A, I went on a mission. I, you know, it's what we do. And once you get the fever, you know, age is a number. Yeah, and, for sure. Especially in graft. Did did you um did you attribute that youthful energy of graf as, as as almost like a repurpose for your um your uh, recovery? 
Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. It was medicine. It keeps your mind, it keeps your mind occupied, mm-hmm. not thinking about being sick. It keeps your energy levels. You know, you know, if you think about someone that was a full-blown rider, it, it consumes your life. It becomes everything. It's the appropriating of the pain, getting the caps, sketching designs, sketching outlines of what you want to what you want to do, getting the guys together, you know, putting together a theme to the car that you're going to paint, going to the yards. Oh, this yard is empty tonight. This yard is packed. This yard's got surveillance or security or whatever. And it, it, it consumes you and it becomes part of, and it's part of who I am, if I like it or not, you know, like I, I go to, I go out to a restaurant with my wife somewhere and somebody comes over and it's like, Saw, what's up? You know, they don't call me Charlie. They call me Saw. You know, because that's who they know me as. So, so it's good. part of it's part it's part of who I am. So yeah. if I like it or not, you know, now that we're getting a little recognition, you know, it's like you're not famous, but you're infamous. Yeah, you know? I feel and, that. And, and I feel like I also feel like it's very important to me because it's was a big part of my life, and you know, even if I climb Mount Rushmore, I'm going to re- be remembered for being soft. You know, mm-hmm. and that's okay. I'm okay with that because that was the, uh, you know, I'm not painting to be famous anymore. Mm-hmm. I paint it. Because, I paint because I love it. You know, yeah. and this opportunity has come along. I've been in shows, and I've been in. The, I've been included in the, the coveted Art Curio mm-hmm. in Paris, amongst everybody from Banksy to Scene to Quick to Blade to Crash to Days Future. You know, I, I've been. I'm among them. Mm-hmm. You know? Mm. And I don't consider myself a king, but I I I I I don't think I just made a mark. I think I made a fucking dent, you know. I didn't just make a mark. I made a dent, and I'm part of history. If you like it or not, if, I don't care if you don't like my work or you don't like my work or you love it. I I think I motivate a lot of older guys. Say, hey man, Saw's doing it. I can I can get out. I can go out and get one in. Why not? Well, that's what legendary no, status is about, man. That's what legendary status is about, and that's what people respond to. I say this all the time. It's like, to find your okay sign. You know, it's okay for you to do it. Like, Sars doing it, you keep going. You know what I mean? Sars keeps on going. Like, you want peers. You want people that you, uh, inspire you that way, don't you? Yeah. The younger the younger guys that I, I'm with, they're like, I can't believe, like, my, my boy Zokes was just in uh, another state. He went to uh, Colorado. He was hanging with a bunch of writers from his era. And they're like, how'd you hook up with Saw, man? He's like, yeah, he just showed up in Phoenix, man. And like, we hooked up and I, Zolk's worked at Trill at the time. He was the paint guy. Mm. So he was like, any kind of, any colors I wanted, I just call him on the phone. Yo, I need some greens. I need some turquoises. I need some purples. I got you, bro. And he packed my shit up. Some of the delivery came in. I'd have my shit on the side. So I had my colors, you know, and mm-hmm. stuff like that. And then, you know, he, uh, he, he's a, a local legend out here. He he had 20 years under his belt. He wasn't a kid, you know? Mm. So when me and him hooked up, we got busy and we did a lot of work. And, uh, you know, it's it's nice to see, like, there's another legend out here, Caper, God rest his soul. He passed away two years ago. Uh, when I hooked up with Caper, peace. we got to do some mm. freights. He did tons of freights out here. And uh, he was a, he's a local legend here and they, mm. they do memorials for him and everything. But uh, he was like, man, Got mad at Zokes because him and Zokes were boys. He's like, you, you and Saw did the fucking phrase. You didn't call me, bro. I'm the fucking legend out here. I'm the OG. You gotta let me down, man. I want to. I want to hook up. So I, I, I was proud to say we got, we got a, uh, a few trains in before he got second passed. That's so, amazing. Hey, look, that's, that's, a, that's a nice it. thing. Like everyone has their OGs. You know, Arizona has their OGs. England, you know, United Kingdom, France. Everyone has their OGs. You know, and their own history. It's true, but one thing that you guys do have is freights. Like, we don't have as half as much of a freight culture. Well, we do have a freight culture. I'm, I'm not going to, you know, I ain't going to uh, put too much shade on on UK freights. But, uh, yo, Arizona, like, America as a whole, I mean, freights is its own. <laughs> That's a whole nother beast, right? It, 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 what I like about the freights is they go all over the country. It's mm-hmm. just like... I, I may, I, there's a bunch of freights I never saw again. But then, you know, when you think, ah, oh, maybe someone just went over them or whatever, all of a sudden, boom, picture will come in my inbox, power the internet. Not like years ago, you had to go out there and bench them yourself. There's so many guys out there trying to document the culture and benching it. I love really? those dudes because yeah. they make my day. They make my day every day because they, they collect, they collect, they collect photos of, of trains like we used to collect baseball cards. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, real talk. 
It's true. They're out there, man. They bench him for us. Yeah. Love the benches, man. They make it, they, they, they document the history and they keep it going. Makes so you're telling different. me that like if like what a year and a half down the line where you think, oh, that's way gone. That's someone's gone over that or whatever. You'll see, you'll see the photo show up. You never know if the freight gets like the freights also go into Canada and Mexico. And sometimes they put them on a ship or boat, may lay in a yard before it's, it might be full of, of scrap metal and they didn't get to it. So that train will just sit there for a while. You don't know what the contents are. So mm-hmm. that's that's another thing. So, you know, if, if it's something that's, that's just hauling wheat back and forth from, from New York to California, that train's going to keep running back and forth. And that, you know, I have some pieces that were benched 20 times and I have some pieces, pieces I never saw again. So, mm-hmm. but it's all good. You know, as long as that, you know, I know I'm still rolling. Even if it's only one left, I'm still rolling. You know? Yeah, yeah, exactly. You can find the roll. It's not a wall. <laughs> it's not a wall. A wall just stays there. You know, a train's rolling somewhere. You know, someone's seeing it if they like it or not, but it's rolling. That's well, it's, it's like the def- definition of Back to the Future because it suddenly comes back like years later. It's incredible. Yeah, yeah it's, so, it's so cool. It's so cool. And I the best it. bit is the Master Blasters keep on rolling. That's the main thing, right? Well, my my goal is when I when I finally do my last piece and I tell my guys when I go, I never know when my last piece is going to be. This might mm. be it. No, you know, I don't know how my health is going to be. I don't know what life brings. Nobody does. Can't predict the future. So, like, and when I, we go out, I say, let's make it a good one because this might be my last one. And then motivate them to, to, to burn, you know what I mean? And then... Mm. You know, hey, two days later, hey, let's go again. Hey, I'm not, I'm not done yet. Let's do, let's get another one in, whatever. And then they go on their own too, which is great. And then they team up with other riders, so keeps it going. And hopefully, I'll leave the, I'll leave TMB in the hands of my guys to keep it rolling and, and keep this going. I, I am planning a, a 50th anniversary of TMB. Woo, nice. And it's ne- next year will be the 50th year that TMB. By the damn. So I'm gonna try and do it. I have a I have a venue I'm working on, and then I'm gonna see uh, what the funds are like, what kind of support we can get to get some of my original guys out here that are left. Like I, it's important that I have Cisco out here, and I get Satch out here, and Quick, and uh, maybe Sago and Cavs. You know, some of my original boys and some of the boys that bond with us, like Ghost. You know, it, it'll be important for me to have all of them there for this venue. But uh, I'm looking to do something. I'm looking to do something epic involving an art gallery, and then you know, meet and greets and, and music and food and that kind of thing. And just having a, I want it to be a party as well. But I want people that show up get to see history, whether it's blobs or photographs of old trains from the '70s and things of that nature. But I'm in the process of doing that now. I already have. A, I already have a venue. I have a sponsor. I have one place in mind. That's that's actually a, a nightclub. Plus an art gallery right across from each other. Wow, and that's what I'm working on right now. So that sounds incredible, good. man. I definitely got to come down and check that out. That sounds Listen, sick. It's going to be epic. If if, I, if I'm going to do it, it's going to be top shelf. Otherwise, I'm I don't do nothing half ass. No, no, no. Uh, no if no, I do no. something, I do it 100 percent, or I don't do it at all. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's right. That's right. And like you say, drive it like you stole it. You never know if it's going to be your last on anything. It's just that's life. Keep it moving. Yeah. that's Let's 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 be a comet. You know what I mean? Yeah, I love that. Well, you've already said to me that this won't be the last podcast, obviously, and I really, really appreciate your time, Sar. It's been an absolute journey. Absolutely. It's crazy. And I feel like we haven't even touched the surface, so we really must do this again, my brother. Listen, just reach out to me. I got you. I promise. I feel bad about the technical difficulties we had, but we'll we'll get it. We'll get it right next time for sure. Hey, listen, the people are going to be well and truly happy that this happened. And again, brother, thank you so much for joining us. Let's get something going in London again. We got to get Steam out of retirement. Get him, get, get him, put a venue together. Get us all these old times back together. It would be great. Sounds like a plan, my brother. Sounds like a plan. We get yeah. VOP, we get ILC, we get TMB. It'll be one hell of a collaboration. Yeah, right? yeah. In, in living color, get Pulse and get some guys together. That would be great. <laughs> yeah. Hell yeah. Stockwell is not ready. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, Killer Killer Podcast. I like we was out of fashion. Saw TMB. What more do you need in your life? Yeah, you need another five and a half hundred podcasts that we've got in stock. So go check them out. Uh, this is part of a bigger timeline. The tapestry keeps on going. Um, as for TMB, as you know, 50th anniversary on the way. So watch out for that. Killer Killer Podcast. I like it was out of fashion. Remember, crime don't pay, but neither did AIDS. Stay lucky and don't talk to anyone. I wouldn't. Easy. Easy.